The Summer Olympics has just been and gone, so what better time is there, except before the Olympics, to talk about what the Olympic rings represent, the continents. One of the first problems we encounter is how many continents there actually are. The Olympics will tell you there are five, others say seven, and some even say nine. The word continent itself comes from con, meaning with, and teneri in the Latin, meaning to hold. So meaning hold all the land together, a continuous piece of land. Hello, my name is Alex, and this is the English Amir, where we look into what people say in English and why they say it. I was going to just make a short video of this, but there was just so much information that it soon slipped out of my hands. Let's start with Africa. Nobody really knows the origin of the name, although in Latin it was called Africus, but this really only referred to the area around where Tunisia is now. Over time, this would have spread further and further south and west as more land was discovered. It's tempting to connect the name to the Phoenician word afar, meaning dust or earth, but people just don't know. The Arctic. The Arctic has a lovely etymology and really refers to the Greek word for bear, Arctus. Now, it would be mistaken to believe that this refers to the polar bear, the only one of its kind to be found there. But in fact, it was because of Ursa Major, the constellation that can be found in the night sky over the region, and in which the north or pole star is located. Arctos, curiously, might well have given rise to the Welsh word Arth, meaning bear, and the base name of Arthur, like King Arthur. The opposite end, if you can call it that, of the globe would therefore be the opposite of the bear, but as the Greeks or Romans hadn't really gotten below the equator, they didn't have another constellation, so they just called it Antarctic. Something that I never really paid attention to before, but the continent is called Antarctica and the region is called the Antarctic. Also, there are no polar bears there. Europe is often linked to the mythology of Europa, a Phoenician princess from the city of Tyre, abducted by Zeus in the form of a bull. She was the mother of King Minos, according to Homer's Iliad. It is thought that the name in ancient Greek might mean wide face. The name for Asia is thought to have come from Akkadian asu, meaning to rise, or in other words, for the Greeks, the land from which the sun would rise. Most people, especially those who live in the Americas, know that it was probably named after Amerigo Vespucci, who was a navigator, made two trips to the New World, an expression that he coined, uh, the Novus Mundus, Remember that most people at that time thought that they were just looking for a quicker way to the Indies, to India. Just think, you North and South Americans, you could be living in Vesputia instead of America. Now, answer me this quickly. Which is larger, Australia or Greenland? If you look at a map of the globe, you will see that Greenland looks at least one and a half times bigger. But actually, it's misleading and a bit of an optical illusion. The fact is that Australia is about four times larger, big enough to be a continent in its own right, right? Australia, uh, as far as the Europeans were concerned, was a hypothetical land known in Latin as Terra Australis Incognita. Oster was the name given to the south wind, if anyone has actually been to Greenland, you know it's not really known for being green. And that is the original meaning, Greenland. The old Viking discoverers who wanted to set up new colonies there thought that it would attract more people if they gave it a, a better, more attractive name. Good marketing, but they might be sued nowadays for false advertising. Well, Hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, that's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.